Good. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Camp Sierra Black Pug training meeting, the most attended pre-camp meeting for Camp Sierra. I would like to introduce all the folks who will be helping out tonight. The, the two people who aren't on this slide that I'll introduce first, if Michael Conover could wave to everybody. Michael's going to be our camp program director for the summer. And then also if we could get Gavin Lecomte to wave to everyone. This is Gavin. He's going to be our assistant program director. I'm Dylan Hendrickson. I'm the camping director. And we've got Bruce Lee. Hello. Bruce is going to be our camp director for the summer. Janet Fan. Hi. Yay. She's our the Silicon Valley Monterey Bay Council office manager. And then my amazing supervisor, Diane Betts. Hello, everyone. She's the director of program for the council. So you've got the whole program team here minus Sierra, which if you do Cub Scouts, you'll have met Sierra. So that's everybody. We're happy and proud to be the hosts of your training meeting tonight. You'll hear a lot from Janet, myself, and Bruce. And then at the very end, we will answer all of your questions, hopefully. If uh, you have audio, please make sure to mute your microphone, ask any questions in chat. Diane will try to get to those as promptly as possible. Uh, and then at the very end, we'll be taking live questions. So you can save any until then if you want to ask it uh, without having to type it out. And here we go. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, this year is the first year we used um, Black Pug for um, our event, including the summer event and um, all the reservations, camp reservation. So um, everyone can create an account, a Black Puck account, and um, link yourself to your troop. And um, you know, can, you can view that um, your troop's activities through your own personal account. So um, we go through, the, the first thing we go through is how to sign up for an account, how to create an account. So I um, create a live link here for you to click on um, to create an account, but you can always go to our website, svmbc.org. And on the first page, um, scroll down to the bottom right, you will see the page, you know, Black Hook, how to use, and you can always click on that link as well to um, create an account. So when you click on that, that link, this it will bring you here and um, you can, if you already have an account, um, you can either click sign in, or if you don't have the account, you can um, click on register. And registration is, is easy. Um, you can just put your um, email address in and they will send you an email to verify your email address. And um, you put in your password and you have an account. So um, with your account and uh, the second, um, Go ahead and at, um, next slide, please. You can also um, go to, I. that's also the live link for you um, when we upload this um, PowerPoint. Um, you can also go to this um, scoutingevent.com and, and on this page, you can see all the um, activities or events that the council um, is holding. So you can click on any event or you can choose the event that you'd like to um, you know, have more information on. And when you click on that detail and registration and register, it will bring you to the next slide. Uh, I, I click on um, Camp High Sierra, so it brings you here. You can also you know, sign in here and it will bring you back to that um, previous page that you see, you know, either sign in or register for an account. Um, next slide, please. Um, Dylan. Um, so as I said earlier, you um, please make sure you link your personal account to your troop. So to do so, you can, um, you know, while log into your account, you can click on profile, edit profile under your name, and it will bring you here. Make sure you um, link your council, your unit type, and the unit number. Um, the unit, you, you can search for your unit number and that way um, it will connect you to your troop account, to your troop activities. And you can just click done and then um, 
you are connected to your account, to your truth. Next slide, um, please, Dylan. Okay, and um, if you... Janet, before Fred, you move on, I wanted to do a clarification that came in the chat that I think is worth everyone hearing. Uh, if you have a Black Pug account with another council, do I need to create a new one? Uh, yes and no. You know, if you have um, another account with another council, you might link to the other council. So um, that's a, a good question. I yeah, I it, have to um, look yeah, more it into should, it. It shouldn't make you have a new one. You should be able to use it. Um, but if you have any trouble, just let us know. But if you mm -hmm. have an existing account, it should work just fine. Okay. Yes, but I'll, I'll um, make, a, make a note. And I'll, um, if you have any issue, email me. Uh, email us at that email address, um, blackpug at svmbc.org. And our team will, um, you know, you know, try to figure out the answer and um, get back to you. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead. And also, um, when you at um, when you are in in the black perk, you can on the lower right corner that there, there is always a support button. You can always click there to get um, answers for um, the page that you are on. Um, they're pretty good of um, posting videos uh, there for you. Um, it might be helpful. Next slide, please, Dylan. Okay, so um, specifically for summer camp. So I have a lot of questions. Um, a lot of people asking me who can access the registrations. So for your troop, the main contact person that you put in your registration form is the only person who received the, the registration link. So, but uh, that person can always, always forward that email to anyone that need access to the registration to help with, you know, um, entering information, to help with um, a merit badge sign up to help with payments, you know, any of those people can get a link from the main contact person. So if you need to uh, me to update your main contact person, um, email me, give me a call, and I can update that for you, but only the main contact person can, can um, get the link to your registration. And um, as you also know, you can always um, transfer your scout from your unit roster to the participant list. And um, only the main contact person, the scout master, or and the community chair can see the roster. But if you want your treasurer to, you know, to access to the roster, to access to a registration, um, shoot me an email and I can add that person as a trusted user of your unit, and then um, that person can have access to your registration to your roster as well. Okay, go ahead, Evelyn. And um, when you log into your account and when you access your registration from that registration link, you will see the list of all the scouts. You will see your registration. Um, as you see, um, your registration, this registration now has no name, has no scouts at all. So we'll, we'll start pulling the scouts from the roster. To do so, you, you can click on that autofill button and it will bring you the roster of your unit. So, um, and you just, you know, click on the scouts that are going to camp with you. Um, in this case, let's um, pick on Connor. So when you click, Click on corner and um, click on field information on the bottom. And it will bring corner over to the, your event, um, just like that. And you can continue doing um, that for the rest of your scout. But um, what if your scout, you know, um, we upload um, roster to uh, Black Perk once a month, but we will do more often during the summer. But sometimes your scout you know, is on your roster, but not in uh, currently in Blackpool. 
So in that case, you can go ahead and click on update information and add um, him in your desk out in manually. So um, instead of have it, um, have it auto, auto fill, you can fill out first name, last name, all that information in for the scout and click done at the bottom. Okay, and um, that will be, um, um, you know, Janet, so you before we move on, I had a couple questions I wanted to have added. We have a few people ask about, what about trusted users? Just wanted to clarify that the committee chairs can add those for their units as long as their Black Pugs accounts are set up correctly. They can add yes. people. Mm -hmm. And if they have trouble, they can contact you. Uh, we yes. got yes. a few people have trouble from out of council that are trying to get the autofill to see their roster. Uh, for those who are out of council, you'll want to reach out to your local council to see if they're uploading the rosters for you. If they are, you can work with them to make sure that's happening. And if they aren't uploading the rosters, you'll just have to add them in manually. Which brings to the last question of what's the minimum information we need to add a scout to the roster? Um, can, can you go back to the previous screen, Dylan? So um, we all this information is required, not, not required, but um, um, uh, we need all this information. The health information is important for us. So, um, so as, and the, uh, the birth date, you know, last name, first name, um, birth date, address, email, you know, um, and the um, allergy dietary restriction, those are, uh, and medical concerns, of course. There's a big difference and to between add what needs to be filled in before signing up for merit badges next week and what needs to be filled in by the time you get to camp. By the time you get to camp, everyone's profile needs to be filled out entirely, except for obviously the things that are fill-ins in case someone has something like an allergy or not. You don't need to put something in that box. But all of the ones that are selected on this need to be filled in by the time they go to camp. Uh, we do want the first name, last name, and birthday by merit badge registration next week. Uh, but if you just fill in the name by next week, you'll still be able to sign them up for merit badges. But if you don't fill in something like the birthday by next week, they may or may not get signed up for badges that they can't be in based on age minimums. So you probably want to try and get at least the first name, last name, and the birthday uh, by next week when the merit badge system goes live. And I, I also would like to add, um, you know, some councils don't use black perks. So for those councils, we, um, you know, you can ask your council if they need, um, uh, or you should know your council use black perk or not. But for those who don't use um, black perk, um, you will have to enter your scout manually. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the parent portal. Uh, in, in, in general, we're going to talk about how to access it, how to initiate and generate the parent portal codes. And then we're going to give you this giant warning here. And we're going to give you this giant warning at the end of talking about the parent portal, which is if you open up the can of worms that is the parent portal, it is the troop responsibility to make sure that the parents input the information that you are giving them access to input. So there are multiple levels of the parent portal. You can give them uh, access to different things to input, but if you give them access to input that information, it is no longer the council's responsibility to make sure that that gets inputted, which means your troop needs to be on top of working with your parents and communicate to them clearly the times and the days that they need to put everything into the system by and what they need to put it into the system for. And so that brings us to the first slide, uh, which is this is how you get to the parent portal within your registration contact. There is an additional actions drop down tab. You click on that tab and then you select parent portal. And that will bring you to this page, which has a whole bunch of warnings and a whole bunch of information on it. You will want to read through each of these very clearly for what you're going to be doing and how 
things are granted out to your individual parents, you can see that the lower half of the page has these two options to click on the parent portal, yes. And then there is a button to click on prevent parents from making payments or seeing event fees. And then there is another button, which is allow parent portal class selection. So if you open up the parent portal, what that allows your parents to do at a very base level is input all of the information that we were just talking about. First name, last name, gender, birthday, dietary restrictions, allergies, and so forth. If you don't click the allow parent portal class selection, the parents will not be able to select merit badges for their youth. If you do click the allow parent portal class selection, then your parents will be able to select the merit badges for the youth that they are in charge of and that they have parent portal access to. If you then do, they will also have access to pay for their youth's registration or for any merit badge fees that might be associated with the various merit badges they sign their youth up for, unless you click the button that says, prevent parents from making fees or seeing event fees. We are going over this very clearly because we do not want you to make any mistakes on this section, especially if this is your first time ever using Blackbug. We do not want you to then just grant access to all of your parents and say, hey, everything's gonna be fine. We don't need to over communicate. Please over communicate to your parents what their responsibilities are for the different level of parent portal that you are going to be using. And the way that you grant each individual parent access to this is by clicking on the parent portal credentials button up there at the top, and it will generate a page that looks like this. It'll have each individual um, attendee, the ID will be transformed into that scout's name. And that QR code will give them access along with the individually created web link will give each parent access to their own youth. You will need to pass these out to your parents so that they can then get access. You cannot just click the parent portal button and assume that all the parents now have access to everything that they need to have access to. So please make sure that if you opt into the parent portal that you then also produce the credentials, you get the credentials out to all of the parents and you make it very clear what the parents are responsible for signing up for within your unit. Uh, this is something that we want to stress uh, is, is a great oh, feature. Uh, it, it is a great feature, but we wanna make sure that you use it carefully uh, and responsibly. And it's something that doesn't uh, you know, create any problems. We, we, we can't fix parent portal issues sometimes, uh, and so the night of merit badge registration, we know we're going to get a few phone calls where we're going to have to talk some parents through stuff because they're confused, but we hope it's not hundreds of parents that we get phone calls from. So please use this judiciously. And that brings us to our next slide, which is, I believe, Bruce. Crickets. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, before we talk about this a little bit, and I saw a question in the chat. Why do we need to submit health form information here when we put it on our health forms? And also you're going to be asked it when you get to camp. We want to be as safe as possible with your scout, especially if they have some type of allergy, be it food or airborne, or they're carrying an EpiPen. And this just gives us another way to double check your scouts to make sure that we know um, what's going on and how we can protect them the best. So I, I understand it. There's some redundancy here but it is for safety and we just wanna make sure we can cover it the best we can. All right, um, so how to sign up for merit badges and adult leader training. So starting next week by, I don't know if we have a slide that shows which, uh, so if you're in week one, you do Monday night, week two and three, Dylan can verify this for me. I'm yep. sorry, I don't have this off the top of my head. Week two and three uh, is Tuesday, week four, is our Wednesday, week five is Thursday, and week six is Friday of next week, all at 7 p.m. And it's first come, first serve. So when we open up the gates at 7 p.m., everybody's going to be trying to log on and, and get these classes. So um, it's not like you can kind of wander in at nine o'clock and expect a lot of classes still to be open. We have a set amount of classes. We've hired 
staff according to how many people registered. And um, we will try to do our best to fit everybody in, but please log in at seven o'clock. Uh, the nice thing about the new system is it's not like Tentary was where only one person could be logging in large troops. You can have three or four people as trusted users and use them to log, uh, you know, split up the load between uh, scouts in your troop. All right, next slide. I've babbled enough on this one. I apologize. I have my video off, but my internet is kind of wonky where I'm at right now. All right. Um, so when you sign up, you will update the information. You'll click the update button for the, the scout. Uh, and these are the scouts that you've preloaded now. Um, this You need to load the scouts into this section. Um, these are the ones going to camp. Next slide. All right. Um, so it'll bring up the information that you filled in. And then you have the, the different blocks that you have available for um, the scouts to take. This is not the slide I was expecting. If you click the select classes oh, button. Select courses, I'm sorry, yep. Yeah. Okay, you click the select courses, then it'll bring up the courses. So the next slide. This is a slide. Um, there we go. All right, so on the right-hand side, the courses are gonna be listed alphabetically and by block. So all the first block classes are gonna be there. Uh, when you click on one, let's say it's the very first one there, archery, uh, period one, qualify period four, and I'll talk about that in a second. It will move it over to the left-hand side and secure that class for that scout. You don't have to check out like we have in the past. Uh, as soon as you click, it goes over there. That is now your merit badge for your scout. Um, the way we ensure that all the scouts take a qualify for classes like archery, rifle, uh, climbing is we booked them as double periods. So here you'll see it says archery one qualify four, archery one qualify five. So that means they're taking the instructional class in the morning period one, and then period four in the afternoons when they actually do the archery and try to qualify for the merit badge or five, six, depending on which one they sign up for. Um, if they've got a partial, um, just have them show up to camp and all, if they all have to do is qualify, have them talk to the instructor. There is no plain disqualify merit badge class here. Um, the other thing that will happen is when you click block one and select whatever class the scout's going to take for block one, all the block one classes are going to disappear. And in this case, uh, for archery one and four, all the period four classes would disappear also. So if you want to change your mind, all you have to do is remove it from the, the selected classes and they'll re-show up on the right-hand side. So very similar to what we've done in the past. All right, next slide. Don't forget to hit the done button after you select all the classes. Oh. It's a minor thing, but it's important. Yep, and the flying arrow didn't show up. <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, you will go on to the next scout if you're inputting multiple scouts once you hit that done button. We do recommend that if you have scouts that have merit badges that are highly important to them and or they need them, i.e. they're an older scout who is looking for a specific Eagle required badge, that if you are inputting multiple scouts, you input those scouts first and prioritize them, just like you would have to prioritize them for any event uh, where they have something that they really need by a specific time. All right, so some of the merit badges have fees associated with them, like small boat sailing, uh, pottery, welding, uh, um, fox fire, shooting sports. So those will um, assess a fee as you're registering the scouts. You don't need to pay them that night, but they do need to get paid before you come to camp or the very first thing when you get to camp. Uh, this is where the parent portal will come in handy. Uh, the parents can pay for the merit badges themselves. Um, I'm also a scoutmaster. I don't think I'm going to allow my parents to select merit badges for the kids because if something goes wrong, they're going to come after me saying, why didn't I select the merit badges? And I, know, I just, for me, I'm going to let them access payments and things like that and information entering. But I think I'm going to have 
uh, myself and the ASMs enter in the merit badges themselves. And again, they must be paid by the first day of coming to camp. Next. So drop-in classes, we do have some drop-in classes. Those will not show up as classes that you can book in, in terms of signing up for merit badges. Those are classes during the day, during the week that you can drop into our handicraft area and take these classes. And they're just a, a couple hours and you can just knock them out and do them at their own pace. And those are art, fingerprinting, music, and leatherworking. So again, they're not gonna show up in the regular list. Now, if you're an adult leader and you wanna take some of the adult leader classes, you sign up for those just like uh, you would sign up a scout, you would select the adult leader, you would say you wanna take um, Scoutmaster Fundamentals, select that and uh, register them that way. So they would register just the same. Next slide. Wait list. So um, some of our classes have hard caps because of safety issues. So our shooting sports, um, Foxfire, those definitely have, we can only take so many people. But if you are on uh, a waiting list, let's say you're in the first three, it will say on there that you're not in the class, but you're on a waiting list. A lot of times we can make the first three happen. Uh, um, so go ahead and stay on. But if you know, you're number 17 in welding. There's not a chance. Go ahead and drop it. Find something else to take. Um, this is where it's beneficial to sign up to your scouts and merit badges right away uh, to make Eagle or, you know, for some reason during the summer. Now, other classes like the, uh, some of the SIT classes and the nature classes, we have the ability to flex and maybe add extra classes. So those are you know, okay to do. I see my little light saying my internet's unstable, so I apologize if I'm breaking up. You're good. All right. Um, and there'll also be a list outside the T, outside the uh, the office of open classes, so things can people can move around during the week. Now is the live demo time, so I'm going to turn it over to Janet to share her screen. Before we do our live demo, there's a People are blowing up this chat and I love it. Uh, there are a few though that I don't know how to answer. So I wanted to put it out to the group so that we can talk about it. Uh, for the registering, some of them have the link that their Scoutmaster sent them. Uh, are they able to use that link to for merit badge sign up? If your troop has selected parent portal for merit badge sign up, right? So. That's all up to your Scoutmaster. I would talk to your Scoutmaster and ask them what level of permission they have given the parents in your troop. We don't know. <laughs> uh, so it, really it's a talk to your Scoutmaster. If any of you are parents and have access, make sure you find out if your Scoutmaster has given you access to pay for fees. Make sure you find out if your Scoutmaster has given you access to sign up for classes. Uh, very important. And Janet, can you speak a little bit more uh, to, to trusted people? Right. To clarify, um, Dylan, um, Dylan's point. Um, if you if your unit uses parent portal, all parents have access. But I think um, Diane's questions um, for for uh, to answer Diane's questions, um, if your troop picked a few trusted persons to you know help with registration they will need the link from the Scoutmaster, from, from the main contact person. So um, that's the difference between the two. And so if you are not sure if you're a trusted person, your Scoutmaster should see that in their Black Pug account. If you're going, hey, my Scoutmaster has no idea, help, please give a call to Janet this week so she can make sure and double check for you or send us an email. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me bring up my screen. And... Well, Janice, Matt, um, since we have such a large crowd here, if you do have scouts with food allergies or um, 
other types of allergies, please feel free to give me a call the week before you come to camp and we can talk through it. I know a lot of times you'll have nervous parents um, because it's the first time they're sending kids to camp and I'd be more than happy to work with you and go through this. Um, we do serve regular and vegetarian meals every meal. So that, that is not a special dietary restriction. But if there's anything else, like I got a, an email today saying my scout is vegan and serious egg allergy. Just give me a call the week before you get there. We'll walk it through and uh, we have a process for this. We do it all the time and we'd be more than happy to help. Okay, you see you my screen? Question about the wait list, which is if you sign up for a wait list badge, it will take the slot. So it will take that slot on a person's schedule and show that they are waitlisted for a badge during that time, which means they will not be able to sign up for a different badge during that time period, uh, which means you either want to be relatively secure that that is going to be something that'll be selected, or you want to have your scout ready to sign up for one of the badges that we post at the office on the first day of camp, so that if they don't get into the class they're waitlisted for, that they select one of the classes that is open. Yeah, sorry, I'll turn it over to Janet now. Okay, do you see my screen okay? Yep. Okay. So um, this is the, um, the our svmbc.org front page that I mentioned earlier. So this is where you click for um, Black Pub help um, guide here. And um, this is a link. You can create your, um, you can either sign in or register for your account here um, from this page or you can go to our, um, the um, scoutingevent.com, the live link that I put on, this, um, on the slideshow and it will bring you here. And you can, you know, click on any check or, um, any event. So let's go to um, Camp High Sierra. It will bring you here and you can, um, you know, click sign in and cre create an account here as well by clicking at this register or um, sign in here at this uh, um, sign in. Uh, oh, let me sign in. So I have the account here. Okay, so when you sign in um, under your name, you can go to um, profile and update your profile. Make sure you um, link yourself to your troop. So um, this is a, the test troop that I um, link myself to. And um, by doing so, if you can see my um, activity, I have to, I have, I link myself to two troops, two, two units. And when I go to view activity, I can see um, all the activities. But um, before that, I want to make sure I picked the right, the, the unit that I'm trying to view the activities. So in this case, I'm gonna pick um, troop 287 and I do view activities. And this is all the activities that troop 287 have. And um, Let's go to the um, summer camp. So if you are, um, you know, the trusted person, you can go to here and then view registration and it will bring you to your registration. And this is your um, registration. And um, to bring your scouts over, you click on auto fill button. And these are all those scouts from troop 287. And let's bring, and just so you know, um, these are fake information. Um, these are not real information from troop 287. So just in case you are from troop 287 and you wonder who these people are. So um, let's pick Lucas and fill information. 
And Lucas is here. If you need to update anything for Lucas, you can go to update information and you know fill in all this information for him. Okay. The nice thing is it brings over everything. You know, um, you see um, address, phone number, birth date, and even a BSA ID number. Okay. And um, so, and on, on the day um, that, okay, so, um, and um, your, you can log in to, to pay for your um, registration. And um, to do so, you go to um, the payment tab and, um, you know, make sure you fill in uh, the information for our scout and um, go to the payment tab. And then um, let me fill in real quick. So why Janet's doing that, one important thing is you need to have your payments in full before you start signing up for merit badges. Otherwise, you will not be able to sign up, start signing up next week. Thank you, Bruce. That's a very important thing. Um, um, make sure all the payments are um, up to date before next week. Uh, Janet, can you demonstrate... What if I don't have a black pug, uh, or my council doesn't auto up auto fill? Can you just show us one more time how I would update that information if I didn't have the auto fill option? Okay, so if you don't have the auto fill option, you go to update information, and let's fill in uh, um, Smith um, John Smith, and you just um, you know type in. Uh, the information, but um, because we did auto field, they don't let, let us change um, the birth dates. But so, but let's do this main street. And this is how you manually uh, enter your um, scout. Okay. And after all that, you click done. And your scout now become. Um, John Smith. Okay. And um, you can either click on this payment or proceed to check out. But I, you know, I assume that uh, um, and you, you know, pay in for check out and make sure you um, have read and agreed to our and um, you can either pay by ACH with this, we don't, um, we, and that's no fee, but we also accept credit card. And this is, um, you know, that's a 2% um, convenience fee. And you all also can check that, um, you know, we'll, you mail in the check and authorize payment. Okay. And that's um, basically how you, you, you know, transfer your scout to your event page. Okay, and um, Dylan, do you want to do the uh, um, select class or would you like me to do that as well? If you could just do that, that way we don't have to bounce around between different stuff. Okay, so to do that, I have to go, let me see if I can do this here. I have to go to the admin. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the, um, because it's not time yet, so I'm, I have to use the um, admin page to, t um, to show you how to register for classes. And um, let's pick this. It's similar to what you have um, on your end. So, Let's say you want to register classes for um, the scout. So 
you click on update information, you will see in the middle of the page, there is a select classes button. Click on that and it will show the, um, all the classes. Let's say you pick archery, um, qualify for block one for, um, for Elijah. And then all block one um, classes are gone. Now block two pops up. Let's say you pick block uh, American heritage for him. And then block three, um, let's leave it uh, as open uh, block for him. And let's go to block four. And you can also search up here as well. Go to block four. Oh, uh, block four is the, um, the um, qualify. Okay, so Indian law, block three. Okay. And then skip uh, blocks. Let's keep uh, block five open. And then um, archaeology for block, uh, for block six. And that's, and that's basically it. And he's, he has all the classes that is on the left hand side. But um, when you go back and you said, oh, he doesn't want archery block one anymore, you can click on this side to remove the class from his schedule. And now his block block one classes are all uh, um, here again. And you, um, and you said, okay, archery one qualify five. And click that one and now he has block four open. So um, after all that, make sure you click done and go to the next scout. You see, um, it shows that he has a balance due of fifteen dollars for his class, and um, you can pay that, you know, through Black Park, or you can mail in a check to us, or um, you can pay at camp on the first day as well. Okay. Um, anything else, Diane? Would you like me to cover? Um, any good. questions so far? Are, are we okay? Go ahead and give me back control of the screen and we can finish this out and get to questions. <laughs> there you are. Okay, let me let me go back and do, 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 do. Ah, ah. Ah. where did it go? Share screen, and here we go. So we're back to the main slideshow. That was the live demo. Thank you very much, Janet. You did a fantastic job there. And now we've got two demonstrations of how to get to selecting classes. And that brings us to the last few slides. We have an event coming up soon, which is the Adopt a Campsite event. It is going to be this uh, Memorial Day weekend. It is an excellent camping opportunity for you of scouts who need Camping nights for the Camping Merit Badge. You just want to get your troop out to a council-hosted event where we cook the food for you, or you're really intrigued by the special voucher that we're going to be offering for the trading post up at High Sierra. This is a great event. We also have the OA Ordeal, which is taking place on May 31st through June 2nd. These are both uh, service days to get the camp ready for the summer. It's also an excellent chance to get your troop up to camp before camp starts if you've never been to camp. And so that your scouts can be a little bit familiar with the with the site, they can figure out where their campsite is, all of that fun. Uh, and that brings us to the next super fun event, which is the Camp High Sierra 75th Anniversary Alumni Celebration Kickoff. Say that five times fast. Uh, on June 15th from 1 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we are going to have an amazing celebration for Camp High Sierra's 75 years. It's Camp's birthday. And we're going to do it in style. We're going to have memorabilia displays. We're going to have some program operating. It is designed for people to drop in. If you've got small kids, we're going to have a tot lot. We're going to have some activities for them as well. We're going to have a fantastic barbecue tri-tip dinner uh, and kind of have already have staffers and campers from all different generations who served on camp staff back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, all the way through up to today. Uh, and that's a great opportunity to interact with them, uh, take a tour of camp of the new things that we will be unveiling. Uh, hopefully, cross your fingers, some work on the observatory and the rifle range slash uh, cowboy action shooting range will be completed by then. We'll be able to show off how things are going with those as well. 
Um, you know, if you have any alumni in your troops who have been to camp before, and maybe they're not as uh, involved with your unit as you would like them to be, this is a great re-engage event that you can invite them to and then say, hey, you went to that High Sierra event, how about you stick around our troop a little bit and help on out as an assistant scoutmaster or committee member, this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, still plenty of spaces open. We're already at about 100 folks. We can still fit about another 100 to 200 more folks. And uh, T-shirts, we've gotten some questions about T-shirts in the chat. There is this really big gobbledygook link there, um, which has also been emailed out to folks. It's also in the black pug now. Uh, we made a mistake in transferring over our uh, registration software and we left in a link so that people can order T-shirts. If you placed an order, for t-shirts in Black Pug, I'm gonna reach out to each of those individual units. It was about 12 units that put in an order. We are going to place that order with this company for you. So you do not need to worry about creating a new order. Uh, about half of those folks have paid. The people who have not paid, we do need to collect funds from. Uh, but uh, this is where we prefer that you go in and order your t-shirts by May 20th uh, is this link right here. That is a copy of the t-shirt that you can see right there. It is going to be glow in the dark. If you order at least eight items, you can will- Can we help up or... I'm gonna mute that person, there we go. If you order at least eight items, you will be able to put your troop number or uh, you know, amazing special troop number one on the sleeve, uh, whatever you kind of want, as long as it's reasonable, you can put it on the sleeve there. And that's at no additional price. And as you can see, if you have a size that is 2X or larger, there is an additional price as well. Sadly for me, I am in that 3X category. I get to pay a little bit extra for the amazing t-shirt. Uh, and that moves us on to the last slide. We open up the floor to questions. The big thing I wanna highlight here before people actually start jumping on is we have an emergency call line. So that number on the screen, 408-638-8349, is the number to call that goes to Bruce, it goes to Diane, it goes to Janet, it goes to me, and whichever one of us can pick it up, we'll be picking it up on that night of when inevitably the world comes crashing down and there is a mistake or two uh, during merit badge registration. Only a mistake or two, not lots. Uh, and so please call that number. If there is an emergency, that number will only be live next week. It's not the catch-all, call this number all the time number. You can always call me. Um, and that email goes to all of us as well. So chs at svmbc.org goes to all those folks that I mentioned uh, beforehand. We really want to make sure things go smoothly for everyone. So please call us or email us if you have any follow-ups to this. And we're going to open up to questions. If you've got a question that's germane yeah. to you. I'll Continue. start with uh, Diane, we have... Diane, before we jump in questions, sorry. Um, this is also important. Um, we have campership um, awards already signed sign up, you know, awarded to the scouts, but a lot of units um, don't have your scouts um, uploaded yet. So I don't know where to apply the campership. So please make sure you have, um, you know, if your scout signed up for campership, please um, make sure you have their names up so I can, I know exactly where to apply the campership. Okay, go ahead, Diane, sorry. I was going to say, we have quite a few people who have solo or provisional scouts coming up, and they're the parents who are going to be signing up the merit badges. Can you kind of speak, Janet, to the process that they should be doing, and how do they get ready to sign up for their merit badges? So if you have just um, a solo camper or um, the um, your um, provisional or um, SPL, um, you should already receive an email from Blackbird. Um, for your registration, go ahead and follow the same um, the same procedure as the um, troop leader. Um, you know to um, to go in and you know update. But we usually update your scout with the name already. So update um, you know other information that's missing, and um, on the date of the week that you sign up for. Um, um, so um, let's say if you sign up for week one. Um, you can log in to back to the same account on um, May 13th, the 7th, to start sign up for um, your scout. Well, it looks like Duke Dang has his hand up, so let's go to, to him for the first question. 
Yes. So I had a question that uh, in the demo, I see Janet that just sold one the registration for Monday. And after that, I don't know how to move to the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then can, can you go back then and show us how to move from the, and after we done the Monday, how do we start Tuesday and Wednesday? I'll take that one. So all classes are Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you don't sign up for every day. When you sign up for archery, you're signing up for four days. And that's all you have to do. Oh, good, good. Yeah, there are some drop-ins, I believe, music and fingerprinting, art, and music are yeah, one day things, but you don't sign up for those. Yeah, you don't sign up for the drop-ins. The kids just drop in and, and go to them uh, and and make sure. One of the things that was listed there in the slides, it was buried a little ways back, which is we highly encourage that people leave one of the afternoon sessions open for open program slash drop-in merit badges. Our camp has a bevy of drop-in programs from skills of the day, which are small activities at most of the areas like Pine Needle Tea, at nature or one-handed bowling at Scoutcraft uh, or the Man of War Sheep Shank. Uh, th these things are great activities to do in five to 15 minutes. And then we also have other specific open program activities like tie-dye or uh, Navajo fry bread or the Miwok Indian tribe coming down on Wednesday afternoon into camp. Uh, we, we highly encourage that you leave a session open in the afternoon also, the afternoon is when it's hotter. So if they have an open session, it's a little bit easier for them to take a break. Uh, and, you know, if they still are really wanting to earn a merit badge during that time period, they can engage in a drop-in merit badge. So that's something that we, once again, highly encourage. Last year, when we introduced the open program uh, expansion, we found that there were a lot of youth uh, that were, were concerned that they could not complete all of the activities in camp while they were there. And you know, that's that's the point. There's more than a scout can do in any given summer uh, at camp, and we want to make sure that they are memorable, amazing experiences. Yeah, we've got another question. It came up a couple of times in the list. We have a couple people here who have a situation where they are signing up for multiple units. So they have a second unit, or they have someone from another troop who's coming their week. Can we speak to that for them? How do they make sure that they can switch successfully between those units? So, so yeah. I assume I assume that you have a solo camper that you um, host for the week. So most or, of these, or, or the ones two? that are asking is they have maybe uh, two linked troops are coming together and they're the person working on both of them. So I think we just want to show them again, how do you select between the two units? Yes. Okay, so let me bring in, that in, up. Yeah, in your in your registration, so in Blackpug, there is a tab that is located in the middle of the page near your name, which allows you to select which unit you are viewing the application through. And you just want to make sure that you're selecting which unit you are viewing it through on your own contact page. So um, Janet, I'll, I'll turn it over to you so that you can share your screen. Um, okay. And then you can show folks where that is. So Dylan, are you saying that if we're registered with multiple units, it'll automatically show up? Yeah. It, it, okay. as, long, as long as you've linked your account properly to each of those units, it will show each of those units in a drop-down tab that you will be able to select. <laughs> But I think Janet is getting you to right now, uh, and um, you you'll be able to pick which unit you're. Yeah, right there. You'll be able to pick. Am I looking at this for Pack Seven Hundred, or am I doing it for the troop? And you just want to make sure the the night of that you're filling in the information that you've selected the proper the proper unit. You just select your troop and view activities, and you will see all the activities here. You just make sure you pick you know the um, camp High Sierra. Yeah. And related to this, we have some people say, hey, I have someone who's coming from a different troop with me. 
Uh, how do we manage that? And I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Janet and team, because I don't always know everything, is they just add that person in, just manually add them in as a scout. They're just a scout coming with your unit. You are providing the leadership for them. Um, and I think we can assist on the back end for anything beyond that. Janet, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, that's correct. Um, you can manually enter that scout into your um, registration and then we can uh, manually validate. So he has, that scout has the little thunderbolt um, under the name. Um, so, um, so and, and he would be, the, the scout should be okay with your two um, validated and everything. And we'll get to the two that have been patiently raising their hands and then yeah. I have a few more from the chat. Adnan. All right, thank you. Thank you all. This is a very clear presentation. So, so thank you for your time. Quick, couple of quick questions. So uh, as an adult leader, if I want to register for a, for a um, course, um, say the uh, outdoor leadership, uh, do I have to follow the same process? Click on update information and select select the adult course from there. Yes, it's exactly. It's exactly yes. the same. It's exactly okay. So it'll be part of that drop down. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think Dylan, you kind of uh, covered it a little bit, but if I have ordered for my son's um, T-shirt through Black Pug, um, do I just have to pick it up at at the site? Uh, yeah. Campaign? So. So we had a couple of questions about t-shirts. Uh, we did make a small mistake when inputting things into Blackbug, which is we allowed t-shirt orders through Blackbug, which is fine. Anyone who has ordered a t-shirt already through Blackbug, we are going to manually place that order with the t-shirt company that we are using. Um, yeah. I do need to collect an extra $8 per person for shipping and handling, or not per person, but per order uh, for shipping and handling. But I'm gonna send individual emails out to each one of those folks. If you are paid, that's fine. If you're not paid, we will uh, be requesting that you do send us in money to pay for your t-shirts. And all of those t-shirts are going to be sent to camp. And on the day of check-in, we're going to pass out the t-shirts to everybody uh, when they check in. Uh, and so that should be pretty easy. Um, that t-shirt is only available as the pre-order t-shirt, which is why it's super special. Uh, and it's of course cheaper than the t-shirt that we order uh, and offer in the trading post. So if you've seen this t-shirt, you know that you want it or folks want it, please uh, go ahead and click on that link. Uh, I sent it out as an email to all of the unit leaders multiple times. Uh, get that link from them so that your unit can put in a t-shirt order. Uh, we think it looks swank uh, and it's a it's a nice t-shirt. We don't want people to miss out on that uh, if they don't have to. Does that answer your question, Adnan? It, it, it does. So if, if now I'm tempted to buy one for myself, <laughs> should I... And I probably will. Should I just... um, go ahead. If you want to, uh, and you've made a black pub order and you want to change that order, you have until next week to change that order by emailing me to add to it. Uh, and I can, uh, I'll, I'll be manually adding it. I'll be the one working with the company to put in the order. So if you do want one of those t-shirts, go ahead and let me, me know. Or, um, you know, if you've already put, we haven't put that order in, so there hasn't been a shipping and handling fee attached to it. So if you increase your order by a shirt or two, uh, you won't have to pay another shipping and handling fee if okay. you let me know about okay. it. So I have to, I've already done it for my son through Blackbug. I'll I'll just email you separately for, yep. for mine. For mine. And yep. then we should okay. Uh, Perfect. Ryan, right okay. before I get to you, there is uh that this keeps coming up in the chat. So I want to make sure we address it. So Janet, there's a lot of people who are saying, hey, I can't see things that I'm supposed to. I'm the committee chair or I'm a trusted person, but I'm not seeing things and so if you're not seeing what you think you should see now is the time you want to work with us to make sure you can see it because if you can't get into at least you won't see the classes but if you can't see the the autofill and the add the information you need to work with us to make sure you get that access janet what are some things that they should be doing to make sure they have that right access so um, the first thing I would say is to make sure you link your account to the tube, as I showed earlier. Um, go to your, the um, click on the little, um, you know, arrow down on your name when you log into your account and go to profile. Make sure you link yourself, um, your account to the tube. So I think that's um, mostly, um, you know, resolve most of the issues. But if you still don't see uh, 
contact me. So I just want to make sure that you are a trusted person um, of your unit. Um, another or, and also and also make sure you use the same email address that you use in my dot scouting because they are related they are linked so uh, make sure you use the, use the same email address to to create your account okay Ryan hey um question. I actually have two questions. While we were talking about t-shirts, I had a question about, um, I had half my scouts in with their scout with their order before you guys made the switch. So I still have the other half to still do t-shirts for. So mm -hmm. can I just can, what should I do? I was, I mean, can I just ignore the black pug one and do my full order through that link? Sure. If you want to do that, that's fine. Just make sure you send me an email saying, don't put in that half order for troop 92 slash 292. I will use the updated link. That's fine as well. As long as I've got everything figured out by next week, we'll be okay. Okay. And I'm then assuming you didn't pay for half of them. We did, but we oh. have a credit on our account. For okay. Out. Yeah. Just let me know and we'll, we can back out the, the payments for, for, the, for the order that you have put in. Okay. Um, second question is kind of what we've been going I'm talking about what you can see and not. Um, I, I've been getting into the registration through the receipt. I just click on in the top right, there's that in that registration. Um, is that going to be enough to do the signups on? Okay, Diane's saying yes. Uh, because, I think so, yeah, yeah. Joe will check with Janet, she knows everything. Right, because if I log out and try to go in on my own, like you guys have been showing, um, I wasn't getting any options for my troops either. So I went ahead into the profile, I added myself. Maybe it takes an overnight thing before it syncs up, but I still can't see my yeah. troops showing up in there. So that just, link that link that you get via email is actually the best way to access things, okay. uh, is the best way. Janet, you wanted to add something? Uh, I don't, so you, um, Brian, um, Brian, you said you go to the um, the website and click on the link and log in and you don't see your troops? Um, activities uh, right, now, right now I, I'm I'm logged out I log back in and it and there is the when you do the drop down where there's profile and log out and all that is there is no mm -hmm. icon for troops you see you see a view activity there view activity option yep I'm, when you what, click there what do you see um nothing it says, do you it, okay um you, you and I can um, um if you have time tomorrow, um, give me a call. Um, okay. I, I can um, guide you through. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I can get in through that link on the receipt. You know, yes, that, that, as okay. I end said, that's the best link okay. to get access to your account. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, Cheryl, what's your question? Okay, thank you. Just to clarify, because um, if you're using the parent portal, you're only seeing your own scout, right? Your own child. Yep. Yep. You cannot yes. use yes. the parent portal um, um, and fix merit badges for any other scout but your own child, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay, so if we have, so our scout master has to make, if he's not going to be doing the merit badge entries, he has to make the person who is a trusted person. There is no other way to enter people for merit badges, right? Right. Okay. And that is simply by him sharing the link to us or Correct. pass the email, you, you guys. You, um, he, he, he can share the link with you and make okay. sure you have your um, account set up, um, link yourself, your account to the two and um, have that registration link from your um scoutmaster i don't know what you mean by that i guess when you say link to your account so okay. if we have a, an adult leader in our troop mm -hmm. our scoutmaster has the link he emails them the link so mm -hmm. even if they get emailed the link they'll still have to have a profile created in blackbug Okay. And what we're saying is, is you can create a, I can go in and create a black bug profile right now. 
Okay. But it'll just be representing me as an individual until okay. I link that profile to a troop that I am in. Um, and 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 or if I am in multiple units, I need to make sure it's linked to those multiple units. So the example that Janet brought up was a person who was in a link to a troop and to a pack. Yeah. And, and that, that that's how you want to be associated with the right units. Otherwise, you're just a lone individual black pub registration. And if you wanted to do that personally, you could uh, say rent a cabin up at High Sierra and have it not associated with your your troop. But you you want to make sure that you get your profile linked to your troop. Okay, so uh, to link someone, the scoutmaster then just how, how does that link occur? I, I'm very sorry. I want to interrupt. Um, I have a link that our committee chair who did the registration sent me and completely without any black pub login incognito window, I can edit our registration from the link that they have shared. Yeah. From, yeah. Okay. Yep. So that wow. e even without any black pub profile, mm -hmm. I can do this and this is, seems to be intended behavior. Yes, it is. Yes, that is the link that you are that is produced for your Camp High Sierra registration. And you can go in and you can edit that events registration. So there's a massive difference between overall using the system as a user for any event, right? So this is the system that is used to sign up for Adopt a Campsite. It's the system that is used to sign up for Camp High Sierra. It's the system that is used to sign up for an event at Cheeseboro. But there is also the specific link that is produced for Camp High Sierra registration specifically. That link is being given to your unit contact. And if they share that link with you, which is a, you know, it's a protected link, you can still go in and make all the changes on this event. And that may be the only thing that's important to you and your unit for this moment. Uh, but in, in the future, you're, if you are in as a user, you're going to want to make sure that you can access it the other way as well. And and Cheryl, your confusion was my confusion. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it kind of does because I just couldn't figure out like you're setting yourself up as a profile, you know, but it just it seemed less formal than I would have thought, I think. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Assuming it wasn't Sylvia. Okay, more hands. Um, let's let's go to the Maraca Troop Two Four Six. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, so so again, we've done this before. What we do is give out the custom link to each scout's parents, so they can sign up for merit badges directly, and they do not need to create an account. And they can on the day of they'll get a button that pops up that they can sign up for merit badges directly. Is that is that Correct in this case as well. Yeah, that's the that's the parent portal option that I warning <laughs> parent portal. Uh, if you are used to doing that and you have trained your parents to do that well, that is a fantastic system, and it produces a link very much in the same way that we've been talking about for the unit, but it produces it for each parent. Uh, and so, as long as you can manage that process, you are good to go. We just want to make sure that if you are using it, you realize that that you have to have your parents trained to properly do that because if one parent misses it and doesn't sign their kid up for badges, it you know it's their responsibility and we wanna make sure that everyone has the same opportunity. Great, thank you. Yes, we have participant credentials, that customized ID, password, and URL. We send that in an email to the parents and ask them to register directly their badges. Um, when it's the day, what is the custom button going to look like for signing up for merit badges? Is it is it uh, going to be very obvious where they should push that button when it's time to to register for minute badges? It's in the middle of the page. Um, select classes. Um, that's a button. Um, okay. For and to, to um, select. And that will appear at seven p.m. on our day. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl. Swami, uh, Swami Nathan, I think is next. Swami. Sweet. So I have a question relating to. Uh, the uh, age restriction on merit badges. Uh, so on some of it, it says 12 plus. On the others is an oxymoron which says recommended age restriction. So is that a hard constraint where 
uh, if the age is below, then it, the merit badge won't go through, or is it just a recommendation from the council? So there isn't a. We used to do this in a in a little bit more of a soft manner. Um, in Blackbug, there's only an age restriction that can be put in. Mm -hmm. All of the badges with age restrictions have been put in, but I'm going to let Bruce talk to this as well. Okay. So um, it is a hard restriction. Okay. Uh, now, if obviously there's options for everything, if you have, let's say, a scout that's been on the swim team since mm -hmm. you know, fifth grade and he wants to get into it, um, that's when you contact us and we'll work sure. with you on that. Um, but 90% of those, it's either a uh, restriction from national, mm -hmm. like cowboy action shoot and some other things, yeah. or it's a physical like shotgun. Um, we've just found that most of the 10, 11 year olds cannot handle a shotgun. They end up 10 feet behind the line yeah. when they pull the trigger. Right. So it, it's a safety issue. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Chris. Hi, is that me, Chris Mark? Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, is uh, I don't know if uh, I am made as a trusted uh, parent or trusted user by my son's troop, but I'm bringing my son for uh, as troop fifty five the loner thing. Um, so I've uh, made his merit badge. I mean, uh, I've I did the registration and did the payment and everything. So the select classes right the button should be visible to me correct because since i made the registration and i have the registration link correct and and um you're coming with your son right um uh, the solo yes. camper yes okay um so you you have access and you've been um you know logging in and see the registration and update the information yes i've done all that yes and on that day you will have this uh, Select button, um, select classes button to um, register to sign up for class. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for confirming. Mm -hmm. Sarah, what's your question? Hi, sorry to go back to the um, link versus. So um, if if we have the link and we were able to go in and manually enter scout information that works for merit badges also yes so next week we just use that same link the biggest thing is if you can get in and edit a scout's information you will have the correct access if you can if you can't get in and see a unit a scout's information to edit that means you don't quite have the right access and you need to work with janet or your scout leaders to make sure you get that set up before next week and so anybody um if i want to have another person help me i can just forward them that email with the link and they can they can register also Correct. the okay and do they they don't need to have a profile or even an account in black pug is that right if you already have all your scouts over um as a participant um, on yes. your registration, your um, your other leaders can um, just go in and select classes. They don't need access to the roster. Right. We don't need, I've already entered mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just anybody can go in, even incognito. They don't need to be related to Black Pug at all, and they can just register. Is that correct? I would suggest to sign up to create an account, but um, incognito, sure. um, you you can do that as well. But um, okay, you know, I I would suggest a a um, account. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There was a good question in the chat, which is, um, you have extra slots or maybe scouts that haven't signed up yet by the time the merit badge registration happens. Uh, please uh, be aware that you know we will have plenty of late registrants. The classes will stay open to select uh, past next week. 
Uh, it's just there will be a lot of options that will have already been signed up for and filled uh, by the end of next week, but we will indeed have plenty of people filling in classes and so forth after next week uh, as well. Uh, Sarah. Oh, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Ben. number, where do I get that from? Say again? The registration number. Uh, I tried to log in. I put in my email, but uh, it asked for registration number as well. Where would that be? It should have been emailed to you if you are the contact. So if you're a, the solo camper contact or the scout league contact, you should have gotten that emailed to you. Um, if you don't have that in your inbox, go ahead and email us and we'll get it back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also check your junk email. Because Blackpug is a, is a large piece of software, it sometimes looks like junk email, and we have found that it is being sorted by some folks' email services into their junk email, so you might want to check that. But we'll still get you another one. Send us an email. Thank you. Hmm? Uh, Han Hanish. Yeah, I'm audible. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Cool. So do, uh, do every uh, trusted adv advisor needs to have a black account? Or it's just the link would work. I didn't get that part for you. The link will work. We just also suggest that moving into the future that they eventually create a black bug account so that they will be able to manage this from from that level of security. Uh, and so that you know when using this system for future events, they'll already have a profile that they'll be able to access for future events. But the link will work as long as it's sent by. It's the link that's produced and sent by the main contact. Okay, because we are reusing the link have a you know like a, a chance of uh, overwriting like you know uh, changing the already existing registration, right? They yeah. If you give them that link, they can go in. So once again, that link that you're getting is the contact is for the event. So it's for Camp ICR registration 2024. Uh, for your roster for this event. Uh, it is not for your overall account. So, you know, if you, let's just say you're a troop that signed up for Adopt a Campsite and you're signed up for Camp ICR Summer Camp and you're signed up for the CHS Motherload Shoot in August. Uh, if they have an account, they'll be able to go in and see all three of those events and manage the roster for all three of those events. If you send them the link, they will just have access to this summer camp's uh, account and, and roster. And they will have the same access level that you have, more or less, to your roster. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Actually, related to that question, because I think there's a second part of that, which is, yeah. can you have multiple adults registering using the same link at the same time? And will they step on each other's toes? Um, the if they're using it, 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 the the way that they would step on each other's toes is if they all click on the same scout at exactly the same time, it it might create a little bit of a snafu, but only one of them will actually be able to get that scout. So the confusion will be that two of the people trying to select that scout won't be able to select that scout because one person will have beat the other two to the to the punch. So just make sure that if you are sending the link out, and asking multiple people to handle class selection that you have which scouts each person is responsible for paired out across those people so that they don't step on each other's toes. But besides that, they should be fine. Yeah, um, so those who are used to using Tentaru, some of the issues <laughs> of the past do not exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and the other nice thing about Blackbug is, is once a class is selected, it's automatically pulled from the available classes. That that selection is what counts. But then also make sure you hit done at the bottom. If for whatever reason one of your parents decides to X out of the uh, of the 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 you know the the web service that they're using, it'll clear those classes. So you know just make sure that they're handling it the way that they should be handling it, and there shouldn't be any toe stepping that occurs. 
Perfect. Thanks. No problem. Michelle. Hi there. Um, I am one of the people who uh, have, has an issue seeing the registration button. So I'm the committee chair. Um, I have multiple people who are trusted people. They don't, they can't see the registration button either. So I just don't know what is the next step for us. Do we need to find the link that somebody might have? Or do we get on the phone with Janet? Yeah, which unit are you with? 219-2219. Uh, Two one nine. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I think Susie will have to send you that link. Okay. And um, I think you are the trusted person, Michelle, for your troop. And um, um, you know, I can talk to Susie and you tomorrow, um, or maybe later tonight. Um, but you are um, Susie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um. Is she one of the trusted person? She's the controller. Oh, she's you're even uh, more powerful than the trusted person. You're a controller <laughs> of your your unit. Yeah, I'm the committee chair, and mm -hmm. I I don't ever recall like who has the link, who got the link, but or only only Susie has a link. So she oh, has to okay. um, forward it to you. Okay, got it. Okay, so once I get the link, then I can we can pass the link to the other trusted people who need to go into yes. the platform. Okay, Correct. it was really hard to like see or understand what was happening in the in the whole Zoom because we can't even get into the into Black. <laughs> That's why we recorded it. Okay, great, <laughs> perfect. Uh, yay. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, Duke, let's go back to you again. You're welcome. Uh, so I have a question about the registration class. Uh, when we link and choose the um, the class for one scout, that class that belongs to that scout, we get that we Correct. how many long how long we wait until we click the, the the done right? Correct. Mm -hmm. As as soon as you click on the class, the class is yours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, someone answered, asked a question in the chat that I want to get to, which is if one scout's registration isn't paid, will that block the entire troop for merit badge sign up? Yes, it will block the entire unit. So you need to have your registration for your troop entirely paid up by next week. Otherwise, it will block everyone. So if you have decided to let all of your parents pay, individually, this is something that as a troop, you want to follow up on this week. And I, if I was a scoutmaster, I would pay for that person um, just to make sure that you are current on all your payments so that you don't have a whole bunch of other kids missing out on merit badge registration next week because one person or one parent didn't get around to paying yet. Um, you know, if, if for whatever reason you've had some scouts drop or something like that. You definitely want to get a hold of us this week to make sure that your account is current so that you can register for merit badges next week. Uh, last year, just like the year before, just like the year before, there will be a unit or two that will get snagged by this. Um, and we hope that it doesn't happen, but you know, please make sure that your payments are as current as possible. Uh, JP. Okay, so two questions. First off, with the payments, um, does it show when we go in whether we're paid up or if we owe? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. So the second thing, I was able to get in. I found that. Um, so my legal name has a hyphen in it, but myscouting.org and Black Pug don't accept special characters in your your name so you got to take that out um and apologies for my cat she's saying hello to you dylan <laughs> um i went into my profile i updated all my information i picked my troop where's the save button how do i 
save my update changes for my profile. On the bottom, there, there should be a done uh, button. No. Nope. Let me. <laughs> should be a done button at the lower right hand corner. But yeah, I just went there... in and I button on the bottom right. There's on a the big bottom. support button, but I know that's not the right one. So it's in the sub window that opened up when you went into profile. Sub window. No, when you opened up your pro, you did the drop down and you went to profile. That opened yeah. up a new. That new window should have a button in the lower right. No, I'm not seeing it. Uh, maybe you it, all all the way to to the bottom. Um, uh, JP. Um, yeah. No, I'm. I'm at the bottom. You, the only you might want to make the the page that you're using um, less magnified. I will try that. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. that that is sometimes a thing with some of these is that sometimes things won't show up because they're not in the scope of what your current web browser is showing. Yeah. No, it's it's weird. It's I can see the, you know, the scouts background with the the scouts hiking and all that and then the window that has all the profile stuff and even if i zoom in or out it just zooms that little window in and out hmm. and the only button i see aside from support says back to top and it takes me back to the top of the page what browser are you using yeah. uh this is chrome oh that should be fine Okay, email Janet slash us, and okay. we will help you with this this week. And we are glad right. that you caught this. The, there was another follow up question in terms of payments. The payment that will prevent you from signing up for merit badges is the registration payments for merit badges. It's a merit badge that has a fee, like let's say the first one you picked was shotgun, um, that won't then stop you from signing up other merit badges it's it's only the registration fees the merit badge fees we don't expect you to pay to next week to get paid after you start, hopefully before right, camp everyone. or on the first day of camp you'll be able to sign up for all the merit badges you want that have fees and not worry about that and also t-shirt fees um, won't count either so if you haven't paid for your t-shirt you should be fine Okay, yeah. Right. Any final questions? I want to remind everyone that if you have questions, this is the week to make sure that everything works. So let Janet know if you're struggling. Uh, we have a phone number if you for next week and that you can call us for help immediately. Our hotline, it's 408-638-8349. I'll put it back in the chat again. And then we have blackpug at svmbc.org for all the blackpug questions we have. Oh, and for the which mare badges are the ones that tend to fill the fastest? It varies week to week. Uh, blacksmithing is always a really popular metalworking mare badge uh, is popular option. Um, many of our sit in the nation. Uh, Michael, any other that you'd say tend to fill quickly? I would say, you know, predominantly Eagle required merit badges, as well as if you have a lot of brand new scouts in your troop, highly recommend signing up for the trail to first class, uh, trail to second class and trail to tenderfoot classes early. Um, another one that you might not think about, small boat sailing and space exploration are also some popular hitters. So sign up for those early and sign up for them often. We have a general question about prerequisites. I don't 100% understand it, but a prerequisite is a listed requirement for a badge that we can't offer at camp. And so, for example, on camping, which is the badge I know about, uh, you have to have 20 days and nights of camping. Uh, you can't complete that at High Sierra during a week. You only get to count one week of scout camp towards the camping merit badges, days and nights of camping. 
Uh, so maybe the, the week that they're going does meet that last requirement. Uh, but the, the merit badge schedule that's on the resource section of our website and the program guide have all of these prereqs listed out. So if you have a scout who is really set on a badge that has prereqs, make sure that they have a note uh, signed by their parent and or scoutmaster saying that they have completed those requirements before arriving to camp. Um, you know, a good one is also... Reptile and amphibian study, which I don't even think we offer anymore, uh, requires having reptile and amphibian for six months. You definitely can't complete that at camp. Um, there, there's plenty of badges like that. Uh, electricity, they have to map out the um, where the sockets and things are in their own home and make a safety diagram. So we, can, you know, they don't. Their home doesn't exist. At High Sierra. <laughs> so, you know, anything that they're going to have to do before camp, they should have a note saying that they have completed said requirement before they get to camp. I hope that answered that question. Um, there is not a specific form. We have produced a letter uh, that we will be sending out to folks and that we will, we will be attaching to Black Pug which is for all the requirements that require parent uh, approval uh, or parent permission or scoutmaster permission, we will be using that letter uh, and sending it out to folks as well. So if there is a badge that requires <clears throat> parent permission to do a specific requirement, please make sure that you, know, you get, once again, parent permission for said requirement before they come to camp. Dylan, I'll just add one additional thing to that parent permission form. Also, every single parent, regardless of if they're taking a merit badge that's currently on that list, should sign it as well on the bottom because there's a special section that we've added for any going out of camp on overnighters. So things like the astronomy, wilderness survival, or clavy overnighters. Just a general blanket statement that, yes, I'm giving my child my scout permission to leave camp for the purposes of X, Y, or Z activity will be listed on that form as well. So just blanket statement, have all the parents take a look at it and fill it out to what their comfort level is. I'm going to stop the recording so it's not tremendously long. And in case people are uh, shy and want to ask some questions without it being recorded. <laughs>